Okay, in this video, we're going to do something interesting. What we're going to try to do is find the power series for the sine function, um, but we're not going to do like a Taylor series where we take all the derivatives and we look for the pattern and we build the power series. We're not going to do it that way. Instead, we're going to use a power series that we already know and in conjunction with those operations that we learned about, about derivatives of power series and integrals of power series to get uh, somebody's power series from a function that's closely related to that guy, whether it be its derivative or its integral or that sort of thing. So one way we could do this is if we know this is cosine's power series, we could get sine's power series by integrating this guy, and this guy's integral would be sine's power series. But to make it slightly more challenging, I want to do this one only using derivatives, not integrals. So you're welcome to do this one with integration, and it would work out fine. But let's try just something new. Let's try to find this guy's uh, power series using the derivative of cosine. So here, here's how we'll begin. Um, the cosine power series is this, as we well know, negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n over 2n factorial. So it only has even powers of x. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate both sides. And as you know, what this would become would be negative sine x would be the derivative for cosine. And then we're going to differentiate this guy. Now you'd say, well, Devin, that's not going to give us sine. That's going to give us negative sine. That's not a big deal at all. We can, we can account for this negative at the end of the problem. So let's, let's think, how would you take this guy's derivative? Let's, that, that's really the meat of this problem. Let's see, we'd have the sum. I'll do the index in just a minute. The terms here, you get minus 1 to the n. That's a tag-along constant for every term in the sum. This x to the 2n, this would be a power rule. The 2n would come down and the exponent would shrink to 2n minus 1. It would go down by 1. Now when the 2n comes out of the exponent, notice you have 2n over 2n factorial. Now 2n factorial, by definition, is 2n times all the terms below it down to 1, times 3, times 2, times 1. So that 2n in particular will cancel the top layer, and you would have a 2n minus 1 factorial. Now one thing you might recall from when we talked about derivatives of power series is that you actually lose the very first term. The reason for that is the very first term is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. So when you take the derivative of a power series, the new power series will start at 1, not at 0 because of that first term that we've lost. So this is almost our answer. There's uh, just a little a little tweaking we have to do to this guy. Um, to write it uh, as in a more comfortable format, I would really prefer that it be back at zero again. So what I need to do is adjust this index to be back at zero again. Now this is a very common thing that you should practice. You should be able to manipulate the terms in your power series to start at any index you want. So if you really want it to start at zero, we'll make it start at zero. So this will be n equals zero to infinity, and we'll have to adjust what these are so that everything works out okay. So let's think about this. Let's start, let's start with the x to the 2n minus 1. I think that'll probably be the easiest one to start with. If n is 1, I really want this guy to start with x to the first power because that's 2 minus 1. And I don't want to lose that. That cannot change. So if n was 0, what would this need to be in order to still start at 1 and then skip every other term like this guy is doing? Well, I think all that would happen would be instead of a 2n minus 1, you'd have a 2n plus 1. Now, if you're curious how that happened, here's really what happened, The kind of the fine print. We, what we did was we took that n out and we replaced it with n plus 1, because if the index goes down by 1, the, this n value in the series needs to go up by 1 to compensate, and then minus 1. So 2n minus 1 switch to 2n plus 1 minus 1. And this simplifies to 2n plus 2 minus 1, which is 2n plus 1.
Okay, so that's really where that came from. So you can either write it this way, or you can just kind of think of it logically. All right now, notice the factorial and the denominator is the same as this exponent term. So this would be 2n plus 1 factorial. And uh, this guy here would be negative 1 to the n plus 1. Negative 1 to the n plus 1 for the same reason as before. All right, you have to increase the n by 1 if you decrease the index starting place by 1. All right, so this is negative sine of x. And so I basically have it. This is pretty much it. The only small thing that I'll do before I finish my final answer is this negative should not be there. And so you can either multiply negative 1 or divide by negative 1 on both sides. It, it doesn't really matter to me. Let's just do divide by negative 1. That'll be, that'll be quicker probably. So we divide by negative 1, and our final answer should be the power series for sine of x will be the sum. We adjusted it to start at 0 and go to infinity of, let's think about this, negative 1 to the n plus 1 divided by negative 1. I think that would make it minus 1 to the nth power times x to the 2n plus 1, all divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. So this is the power series representation of the sine function. Now, here's the cool thing. You, you, I hope you realize what we just did here. We found the power series representation for a function without doing it like a Taylor series where we actually have to take a lot of derivatives and find patterns and that sort of thing. We could have done it that way, but you know, some would argue that this would be faster. If you know the power series of somebody closely related to your guy, if he's the derivative or the integral of your guy, then you can simply differentiate or integrate the power series to get the power series representation of your associated function.